Canada is standing by its contract to sell billions of dollars worth of armored vehicles to Saudi Arabia despite the shocking allegations that the Saudi Arabian government tortured, murdered and then dismembered Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi inside the Saudi Arabian consulate in Turkey. Now, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, a man called Mohammed bin Salman, or MBS as he's known, has sold himself to the world as a reformer. He let women drive in the kingdom. But has he now revealed himself to be the kind of brutal dictator Canada should not be doing business with? Dick Fadden is the former national security director to the prime minister, both Stephen Harper and to uh, Justin Trudeau, also the former head of CSIS. And Peter McKay is the former foreign affairs and defense minister. They both join me now. Good to see both of you gentlemen. Peter McKay, how do you read this? There's a lot of geopolitics here, but it begins with the disappearance and what the allegations of the brutal torture and murder of a journalist. What's your read? Well, the fate of Mr. Khashoggi has to be of concern to everyone. And as was pointed out, it happened inside Turkey, inside the Saudi consulate to make it more complicated. And the relationship between those two countries is important. There's a lot of geopolitics here, but let's not forget uh, th this is a, a huge uh, issue for everyone around the world. Journalists uh, disappearing, being hacked up. This is more something out of Pulp Fiction or a Tom Clancy uh, film than something we've we've really seen before. Short of, I'm quick to add, some of what appears to be state-sponsored assassinations by the the Putin regime in Russia of some of its former citizens and operatives. So we seem to be spiraling to a very dark place. And then the question becomes, what do we do about it? When the Saudi government, this crown, new crown prince, MBS, lashed out at Canada after the Canadian government critiqued his regime for human rights issues over Twitter. Uh, was that a sign that he's more dictator than reformer? And then it raises the question, should Canada stop selling arms to this guy? Well, I think we have to start from the premise that Saudi Arabia is an absolute monarchy. Sure, there are some administrative controls on what they do. I think uh, that the crown prince is doing everything he can to maintain the dynasty in place. That means that I think he accepts a me some measure of reform is necessary, but I would argue that his bottom line is maintaining control. Um, as far as Canada is concerned, I think we have to step back a little bit. Um, you know, in any difficult decision, both in the private sector and in government, there's a balance between pursuing one's interest and the values that one brings to bear. In the case of foreign policy, there's also the issue of, in either of these cases, do you want immediate, short-term, or long-term reactions? So I think you know, the government has to sit down and sit, sit, sorry, think through these various considerations. Yeah, Peter McKay, I thought Donald Trump basically, he may have put it crassly, but it's true. He said, yeah, this guy may have been murdered, and it may have been them, but we sell the Saudis $110 billion worth of arms, the Chinese or the Russians are going to take our place if we cancel that. So this might be bad, but it doesn't jeopardize business. So business comes first, human rights and all that stuff comes second. Is that the same for Canada with our relationship with Saudi Arabia and the light armored vehicles that we sell to them? Well, that's a great question. I, I think you're right. There is a, a very real uh, conflict here between business and values and, and who we trust and who we consider an ally. In the case of Mr. Khashoggi, uh, he's not the only journalist who has suffered uh, immensely in some of these regimes. Turkey itself has a very spotty record and, and yeah. has centralized control. It's certainly going on in China. So I think Canada does take a, a much more value-based uh, view, and as they should, in terms of who we do business with. Revisiting this contract may come to pass. I suspect, Evan, that we are going to see a lot of countries revisit their relationship. Let me just move to China. Peter McKay mentioned China, Dick Fadden. And look, we're talking about our relationship with Saudi Arabia. We have a government that's actively pursuing trade with China. Two senior ministers are going to China next month to kick off uh, more trade talks. But U.S. politicians are warning the Canadian government, don't get too cozy with China. They have real concerns, for example, about the Chinese telecom giant Huawei. And American politicians are saying, don't let them be part of Canada's telecom system. Dick, this used to be your wheelhouse. Are these genuine concerns that the Trudeau government has to be concerned about when it comes to Huawei and the Chinese? 
I think they absolutely are uh, real concerns. I don't doubt that the officials who have advised the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister are acting in good faith when they say they think they have in place a system that can protect Canadian uh, sovereignty in this matter. But the, the truth is, though, we absolutely don't know. To quote a relatively infamous American politician, we don't know what we don't know. Uh, so it is possible that we don't have the capacity to block the Chinese, but they would certainly try to uh, gain an entry point into our systems. The other point I would make, whether they can do that today or not, this is going to be an ongoing operation. And if they can't get in today through our various protective devices, they are extraordinarily competent technologically, and they'll manage to do it in two years or three years. And I think I worry equally about the fact that we do not want to be seen as the weak link of the Five Eyes or the NATO alliance. Right. And so I think the risk is too great. We should just say no. We should just say no. That would be Dick Fadden's advice. Uh, don't let Huawei in on this, the next generation, the so-called 5G. Uh, Peter McKay, last word on that. Would you share that, that not just the concern, but just say no on that stuff with China? I would, and I, I today and in the past have taken advice from Mr. Fadden. I think he's one of the foremost experts, especially when it comes to cybersecurity. And his points are very valid insofar as we do know that China, among other countries, Iran, Russia, other non-state actors, are constantly hacking our system. And they're state-run. Let's not forget that Huawei is a state-run company that has built into its constitution, if you will, that they keep a back door open. That is, when they're in the system of another country, they can funnel information and technology and state secrets out of that uh, host country. So there is much to be concerned about. All right, uh, I gotta leave it there. But you talk about unknown unknowns, there's a lot of knowns there as well. Dick Fadden and Peter McKay, great to have both of you on the program.